You're listening to Big Table, a podcast about books and conversation presented by Hat and Beard Press, Dub Lab, and Gold Diggers in Los Angeles. I'm your host, JC Gable. For each episode, we speak to one author about a singular book in a long form interview. Each interview is then followed by a brief reading, sometimes from the same book being discussed, sometimes by a like minded title and a different author. But every episode does retain a loose theme throughout and is inspired by the work of radio host and oral historian Studs Turkle. Thanks for listening. Say Adams, the original art director for Def Jam Records in the 1980s, is responsible in many ways for the look and feel of early hip-hop album cover art. Just picture the Public Enemy logo, or Run DMC, LL Cool J, and you've tapped inside the mind of Say. Jeanette Beckman, meanwhile, started shooting photographs in the mid-70s for the UK music weeklies like Sounds and NME during the first wave of punk. She moved from her native Britain to the States in 1983, just as hip-hop culture was coming into its own. Beckman captured so much of these early years as a freelance photographer. Since then, Beckman and Adams have been good friends and kindred spirits. Enter the mashup, a collaboration between Beckman and Adams, whereby Adams hired 30 first wave graffiti artists to write and draw over some of Beckman's original photography of that era. This work was produced as an exhibition at Fahey Klein Gallery in Hollywood a few years back. Working together with Fahey Klein, Hat and Beard Press produced a monograph of the work comprised in the mashup. It is available now at hatandbeard.com and at fahekline.com. I caught up with Jeanette and Say soon after the publication of the book and the staging of the exhibition. Here's photographer Jeanette Beckman and artist and art director Say Adams. Maybe we should just get specifically into how this idea of the mashup came came about. And obviously there's a whole book that's been created of it and a show that was at Fahey Klein. But did the collaboration start with just a couple of different artists and then it just grew into something bigger that is what it's become in the book that we made? Well, the collaboration started because um, we were going to do a pop-up art show. Someone had asked us both to be in a pop-up art show and say, just came to the meeting and said, I have an idea. I'm going to get my friends to draw on Jeanette's old school hip hop pictures. And at that point I was like, why, why would they want to? And he said, just wait and see. And we say, asked 10 of his friends to reinterpret my hip-hop pictures and we had a little exhibition in uh, at Bond Street at my studio and you know 400 people turned up to the opening and it that was the start of it am I correct say uh, pretty much yeah, yeah it, it, it's really an art project and the idea was that we were just going to do uh something that was fun there, there was no talk of it becoming anything a lot of trains a lot of fun a lot of art art that's going to be a part of new york city's history forever jeanette's work resonates with so many people and it just seemed like a good idea to expand it and and, and so then it grew a little bit more and then it grew a little bit more Crash, Lee, T-Kid, Lady Pink, Zephyr, Revolt. Um, They're rock stars. I mean, these are the people that paved the way for the street art movement that we know of today. The most important thing for me with the mashup is that these are all artists that sell work in museums and galleries, very sought after, they're very hard to pin down. And I I think that the mashup is a testament to our longstanding uh, friendship because 
they wouldn't have done this for anybody else, not the collective that we got together. And the fact that everybody did it for the love of the culture, if you will, is really important. And it's something that doesn't happen often. And more times than not, everything nowadays is about scheduling because everybody's so busy. But on top of that, everyone knows their value. And so asking somebody to do something as a labor of love has to be something that resonates with them first and foremost. When all the toys are like home sleeping, cuddling to their pillows, they usually have curfews. Come down in the wee hours of the night after the work has done their job, the sweep has done the sweeping they had to do. Just take my time and be creative. I think if anyone had asked, else had asked them, it probably this project never would have happened. It's, it's because of, you know, you guys have like this incredible bond, all of you artists that came up at a certain time. And it's really important. The time was right to do something to honor all of these artists. And the fact that it was an overwhelming success tells you that people are hungry for this art. They want to know more about the artists. And I, I think that all of those things combined are what makes these type of projects really special. We are, you know, the generation that I came up with, we're, you know, the pop artists of our generation. And I think that the younger people that are um, a part of the mashup understand that. And I think it's equally important for everybody when they participate in something like this. It's saying this is, I guess, more to you, but, you know, when you were doing all this stuff, you know, back in the 80s, were you thinking to yourself, you know, I'm working as a graphic designer or was it all, you know, or if I'm working as a graffiti artist or it was all just kind of one amalgam of just creativity? Um, well, I was certainly aware of what I was doing when I was doing it, but I, you know, I, I think that when I was painting graffiti on subways, that was more of a way of just trying to do something to be heard. It was trying to get the attention of adults and the establishment, but it was really for myself and my friends. It was a subculture at best. Even the smell you get, like when you first smell trains, like in a yard, it's like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good smell to like a dedicated graffiti writer, I guess. By the time I'm uh, doing album design and working with the folks at Def Jam, I had a much clearer vision of who I was and where I was going. And I recognized my responsibility to the, the recording artist. I, I knew that what we were doing was important. And I would constantly have conversations with Chuck D uh, from Public Enemy and LL Cool J about their... Um, album design and, and sort of constantly reminding them that what we're doing is important and we're changing the face of art as it relates to the music and so I was always conscious of that um, that said I, I never sort of took myself too seriously because I always thought of what I was doing as being behind the curtain so by the time I have an opportunity to do something like this with the mashup, I, I thought it was time for all of those pioneers to be able to take a bow and, 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 you know, step up. Because the music is such a powerful medium, really just, it overshadows everything in its path. And so that's why I love the mashup so much, because like I told Jeanette, this was going to be a book that celebrates the makers and it, it wasn't as much about the recording artists they get plenty of shine this is about the visual artists that you know paved the way for everybody that's out there making work today the mashup photography by Jeanette Beckman and art direction by Say Adams published by Hat and Beard Press and Fahey Klein Gallery is available now 
at hatandbeard.com. Support Big Table, go to bigtablepodcast.org slash bookshop. You can help us and independent bookstore culture at the same time. Big Table is produced and presented by Hat and Beard Press, Dub Lab, and Gold Diggers in Los Angeles, and is supported by Invisible Republic, a nonprofit arts organization based in Chicago, New York, and Los Angeles. You can learn more about their community-based programs and publications at InvisibleRepublic.org. Big Table would not exist in the audio world without the expert skill sets, friendship, and dedication of sound designer and editor Matea Bain and audio engineer Jacob Ross. Special thanks to Eric Gorman at Gold Diggers and Alejandro Ali Cohen at Dub Lab for early encouragement and engineering prowess. Thanks again for listening.